Hey, we're Aaron and Jennifer Smith with Marriage After God. Helping you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And today we're going to do something fun and we're going to talk about creating a family mission statement. Welcome to the Marriage After God podcast, where we believe that marriage was meant for more than just happily ever after. I'm Jennifer, also known as Unveiled Wife. And I'm Aaron, also known as Husband Revolution. We have been married for over a decade. And so far, we have four young children. We have been doing marriage ministry online for over seven years through blogging and social media. With the desire to inspire couples to keep God at the center of their marriage, encouraging them to walk in faith every day. We believe the Christian marriage should be an extraordinary one, full of life, love, and power that can only be found by chasing after God. Together. Thank you for joining us on this journey as we chase boldly after God's will for our life together. This is Marriage After God. Firstly, we want to uh, just thank everyone for joining us on this podcast today. Uh, we're super excited just to have you join us because this is going to be an interesting episode. We have a lot in store for you. Uh, but first, we just want to ask that you would take a minute to leave us a review. It's uh, easy. You just scroll to the bottom of the app and just leave us a star rating review or a comment review. Uh, this is one way to support the podcast, Marriage After God, uh, because it allows other people to find the podcast. And we want to do that. So please take a moment to help us out there. And thank you. And also, uh, our book's out. Our new book, Marriage After God, yeah. is available. Uh, it's been such an awesome ride seeing the response we've been getting. Yeah. And if you have not picked up a copy yet, we'd love for you to go to shop.marriageaftergod.com and pick up a copy today. Uh, the, one of the most powerful ways you can support us is by buying our book. And it also supports your marriage and your life. So uh, we wrote the book for you. We wrote it to encourage you in the ministry that God has for you and your spouse. So go grab a copy today. Okay, so we are going to start off here with an icebreaker question. And Aaron came up with this this question, so I'm hoping he has an answer. Um, what is the ideal family trip or vacation? I actually didn't think about it when I said it. Oh. <laughs> so, so I don't have it. Okay, let me think. Ideal family trip. So I can look back on something we have done that I really enjoyed when we went to the East Coast, but we did like a plane drive, plane drive. It was over a period of like, you know, a week and a half, two weeks. Yeah. And I thought that was a lot of fun because we got to fly the portions that I thought would have been boring, maybe get to a new area and then drive around, uh, stay for a, a day or two, go to the next place. Okay, you said ideal family trip. That doesn't sound ideal for any family. <laughs> for me. That was, oh, are you saying ideal for everyone? Yeah, I don't know if that was your question, but I'm just thinking everyone listening right now is probably shaking their heads now. I thought that I, that was a fun trip for us. I think the majority of, of families, especially with young children, would say flying and driving multiple times in one trip would be a difficult challenge. Okay, I didn't know it was ideal for everyone. Ideal for everyone would be like a going somewhere awesome and staying there for a while. Yeah, I think <laughs> like that's with true. a with a house that's comfortable and you have all your family with you and there's a pool or a beach. Where would that place be, Erin? <laughs> Maui. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Awesome. What what's ideal for you? What would that be? So I think you and me just like adventure because I really had fun that that time too that we went to the East Coast. But um I think an ideal family trip is um, visiting family in California. And I think that's just because I know it's something the kids enjoy. We usually hit up the beach. We stay there all day. So yeah, that is fun. I think it's just an easy kind of go-to is when you're visiting family somewhere, you're staying with them and you're just doing something simple. All right, those are relaxing. good answers. I'm sure everyone listening has their own ideal. <laughs> Like well, no. staying home, eat, <laughs> eating ice cream. That now that it's ideal. summertime, I'm sure there's a lot of people traveling and doing you know, maybe family vacations yeah. or summer trips. So camping, I ho we hope you guys are. And we hope yeah. that if you can, you know, spend that time with your family and doing something fun, even if it's local, that, you know, camping in the backyard, <laughs> you're doing it because those are memories that your kids will love forever. Oh, yeah. So I just want to, before we get into the main topic, we're going to, I'm going to read a quote from the book, Marriage After God. And it's about this idea. And it's from chapter 13 of Marriage After God. About what idea? Just so you clarify. Of, um, yeah, it's, a, it's about the idea of uh, creating a vision statement or a mission statement for your marriage. It says this, Casting a vision together for the future of your marriage is an intimate experience where hope for the future stimulates perseverance for today. And what's uh, awesome about that is when we, when we create a, uh, a vision for the future, it doesn't mean we're necessarily planning to the T everything that's going to happen in the future. It's just saying like, this is where we'd like to be. Mm -hmm. This is what, you know, the trajectory we want to be on mm -hmm. as a family. Uh, it helps in those moments when it's tedious, when it's hard, when you're going through suffering, you say, well, 
we're in this together. We're going the same direction. We know where we want to be. And even if we never get to that exact point in time um, or ideal situation, we're going there together. Yeah. And uh, in chapter 13 of Marriage After God, we really, you know, drive home this idea that this is an intimate experience that you guys get to do together. And it's something to look forward to, um, casting a vision together and and having hope for your marriage and and hope for your future together and for your family. And uh, this is something that we we've, you know, kept as a, a, a valuable thing in our marriage for years. And I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the process with you. And, um, and so even though in marriage after God, we don't strictly talk about creating a family mission statement. We do talk about casting a vision together. And in the back of marriage after God, we even list some questions for you to like sit down and have a, you know, one of those date night conversations and be mindful of, you know, the next five years, the next 25 years and what that looks like. Because when we, when we look to the future of things, there is hope there. And, I think that's and, important. and we have, all, like you said, we've always cast vision, planned for the next, you know, 60 you know, days, next six months, next year, five years. We kind of do seasons. We do seasons mm-hmm. of that. But we've never sat down and actually wrote down a family vision statement. Yeah. So <laughs> even though we kind of operate out of this kind of same understanding, yeah, we've never sat down to do it. And it was actually because of the the Marriage After God podcast series, which you got, if you guys haven't checked that out, we've been going through... Yeah, just ended you know, a couple 16, episodes 17 uh, episodes uh, about this idea of marriage after God. But several people who we interviewed brought up this idea of creating a family mission statement, how it has impacted their marriage. Um, and, you know, I know people share about it online, too. And so we just kind of wanted to use this time to first encourage you guys in your marriage. Mm-hmm encourage you guys to uh, ha- have hope for the future as you vision plan together, um, but even more so create a family mission statement. That's our challenge for you at the end of this, this episode. And uh, because Aaron and I have never officially done this before or wrote it down, we thought it would be fun to... We're going to do it with you. <laughs> do it with you. We're so. just going to start talking about it in, in this podcast episode, and we're going to start coming up with kind of the foundational ideas for our own mission statement. And this was an idea that I had after list, after having those interviews and being encouraged by people because I thought, you know, so often we hear people say, you know, we did this thing, we created this family mission statement and here it is, or it's yeah. still a work in progress. That sounds wonderful. Good, good for that. That's awesome. <laughs> but where's the example of doing it? Which yeah. I don't know if everybody needs an example of that, but sometimes it's helpful to go, what does that actually look like in a conversation? Yeah, how do you have that conversation with your spouse? I feel like every time a couple that we interviewed brought it up, we looked at each other and we're like, we need to do that. Yeah. Like we like <laughs> wave our hands like, yeah, we just need to do that. So the unique part of this uh, episode today is actually that we're going to be jumping in here in a bit to kind of uh, just experience it with you guys. This is like a behind the scenes. We, we of- have not talked about this before recording this. Yeah. So you'll hear the candid conversation about how we see our family yeah. where we see we're going to go. Uh, yeah. So you're going to join us on this little adventure with us. Okay. So um, before we start, why don't you read that quote from Seven Habits of a Highly Effective Family by Stephen Covey? Okay. Because it his, isn't his whole book about creating a mission statement. So I will uh, let you guys know that we actually haven't read this book, yeah. but um, I just jumped on really quick to, and I typed in, you know, Google and said, family mission statement. This is a part of the process. Yeah, I encourage you guys to do that too. Um, so we haven't read this book. We probably will in the future. Um, but uh, there was several people who were quoting uh, this from his book. And it says, A family mission statement is a combined unified expression from all family members of what your family is all about, what it is you really want to do and be, and the principles you choose to govern your family life. That's cool. And that's essentially what we're doing. We're not doing it with our kids this time. Our kids are, I think, too young. They'll eventually get older. And then what we'll do is we'll probably sit down with them and invite them in and we'll adjust because maybe our kids will have um, other perspectives they want to bring in. I know that we have families that they they have bit large families, lots of kids, and they bring their kids in, their older kids and invite them to be a part of this vision planning and mission statement. So two things since we're being candid here. Uh, The first one being, I don't think our children are too small to be incorporated even at this stage of the game because... It's not finalized yet, right? This is our yeah. this is our initial go at it, and so and Elliot I think is pretty smart. Yeah, Elliot, be like, why don't we? But I think our okay, so our kids are um, six and a half, four, 
two and eight months. So obviously true. It's not going to like say much, but having a kind of family fun meeting where we're saying, okay, guys, here are some questions mommy and daddy have for you and getting them involved. And even if some of the questions are over their head, it'll still be a fun time to spend together. And we'll, maybe we'll be Let's surprised. write down the funny answers and then we'll keep this for the future and say, this is what you said. <laughs> well, maybe we'll four. be, maybe we'll be surprised by them. It's probably true. So uh, I do. And the I sec- concede. <laughs> the second thing is, is I want to encourage those listening. If you do have children that you do find a way to incorporate them mm. in this process because they are a part of the family. And if you're doing it yeah. and you don't have kids yet, that's okay too. You and and I guess it would, it's going to give them more ownership and be like, Hey, you, you are members of this family, not just people that are in it. Right. You're a part of it. Yeah. You know? And I think what I've gathered from trying to understand this family mission statement thing is that it's not something that is like, here, here are the rules. You know, it's more of something that's supposed to encourage the family unit to be in agreement mm-hmm. and have the same understanding of, of what those family, you know, core values are. So. It, 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 even though, you know, this quote up here says to govern your family life, I think it's, there's, there's freedom in that. It's not like a list of rules, but it's something creative, a, a creative way to establish standards and, and core values. Okay. So should we do it? Should I think we, we start should jump in. Working yeah. on this. And I know our kids aren't here, but we're going to start at least with the foundational stuff, maybe. Yeah. Answer some questions. And, and just again, to preface, this is not something that's, that there's not a final answer to. We're kind of just right. jumping in to show you guys how the conversation could go. And they'll, well, it's going to go. Oh, it's going to go. This is, <laughs> this is our is legitimate conversation that we're going to talk about our mission statement <laughs> okay. as a family. <laughs> okay. Uh, you might hear keyboard typing because I'm taking notes. That's how I'm doing it. Yeah. So uh, you have a question there, but I want to, I, I guess I want to start with the first one. I know we kind of hit it up, but when I, when you hear mission statement, because I'm sure everyone has their own like little definition of it. and you even had to Google it. Like, what's everyone do? <laughs> Everyone's got a little different take on it. What, when you think mission statement, what do you think? Like, is um, this like our, our like one word phrase or a few word phrase that like when we are out and about, we say, this is who we are. I, I Yeah, <laughs> we know? get t-shirts made, right? Yeah, we're going to get some t-shirts made. <laughs> That's is not a like, bad idea. Um, I th- the word that comes to my mind is it's a motto. It's a way of being, it's a way mm-hmm. of doing life together. And it it is... I do think it is something that should be shortened and concise so that it's easy to remember. There might be, there might be portions of it that are, you know, um, uh, you know, expanded upon, but I think it should be something that is easy to remember. Okay. It's almost like, um, what's the, a statement of faith on a a website. It's like, this is what we believe. This is who we are. Exactly. Uh, And this is how we're going to (laughs) live. Yeah, and of course, because we're we're believers and we we love the Lord and we love the Bible. That's probably going to be a big part of this. Well, yeah, I would assume that uh, Christians who create a family mission statement, it's it's built upon the Word. Right. Okay. So then the Bible, we're going to have to have some verses, and we'll get to that probably. Yeah. So here, here's the first question: What are some words that describe our family or what we want our family to be? Hmm. I'm just going to throw out the first thing. Okay, go. I thought of is generous. Yeah. Um, and for those listening, a lot of the things that we're going to say, because we kind of have just walked in certain things mm-hmm. over the last, you know, 12, 12 years that we've been married. And even before then, I think there's just going to be some natural things that come out of us. Yeah. But now it's going to be solidified as like, this is who we are. So yeah. I, 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 generosity is, is something I believe that's been a mark of our marriage for a long time. I like that. Um, um, the, a word that comes to my mind is, I think I already said it, but adventurous. Meaning that we find the fun in things. Write that down. We find the fun in things because there could be lots of different adventurous. Adventurous like we like to take financial risks Uh, (laughs) or adventurous like. No, more like we do fun things. (laughs) Okay. That's a different kind of. (laughs) We like to explore. We like to eat. We like to go. We love change. We love change. Um, Not too much change, but we like new environments. Yeah, I would say not change so much to our rhythms and routines because those are important, but more so just experiential. I don't like know how to explain New environments. That. New environments. Like it goes into the adventurous yeah. side of we, we like to go to new places. So we like to be around new people. I don't know if we've shared this before, but um, we've kind of uh, done these Saturday adventure days with the kids throughout the summertime because mm-hmm. we go through seasons where it's just easier. We did a podcast about the okay. adventure days. Okay. So that's, a, that's an important thing. When I think of adventure, I think, you know, time set aside where we know we're going to be doing something with the kids, whether it's local or maybe a two-hour Out of drive. the norm. 
So like yeah. we have our normal flow, we have our normal rhythm, mm-hmm. and then we're going to go do something not. Go on a hike. Yeah. Go look at the river, go whatever it is. Yeah. Go for a, a long drive to a new place yeah. for a, a rose garden or a, <laughs> I do. I make or Aaron, apples. <laughs> you guys, you guys don't know this about me. I make Aaron go out of his way for me all the time because she's like, I found this orchard <laughs> on the other side of the mountain. Can we go? And then like uh, it's not open. Or oh, I'm just yeah. kidding. No, we've actually had a lot of cool adventures just because you Google and find a cool place. Yeah, to, even to go like see. you know we were in we were in Portland this time last year, and I remember um, it was hot and only Elliot was awake. The other kids were napping, and I was like, "Will you just pull over and let me go see the rose garden? I've been wanting to see it, you know." But it was a fun little detour, and it worked mm-hmm. out for everyone. But I like that kind of stuff. So adventurous in the fun kind of way, in yeah. the environmental kind of way, the experiential yeah. kind of way. Yeah. Um, I would say. Another word I think of is um, uh, community. Mm. I know that's like an easy buzzword no, it's for good. Christians, but like we've made decisions, big decisions in our life. And one of the main criteria in that decision was community. Yeah. Often. Mm-hmm. Um, when moving, we, we, what our prayer was, well, we can't move until something changes in our community. Because mm-hmm. we have these relationships, we have these connections. So we, being God loyal. has us here. Yeah, like, a, oh, I like that word, loyal. Um, walking, just we walk with people and we don't just say, well, they'll get over it. We're going to move on and find new yeah. friends. Like we, and not that we've been perfect at this, but sure. community has been a huge part of how we make decisions. Like even now we think like if we ever were to move, who's going to, who are we going to convince to move with us? <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that we don't like being, a, like we couldn't do it on our own. I would just... We we know that community is so important and we want to take it with us. Yeah. <laughs> so so can, yeah. I would say a, a par- part of that is also walking in light. And we've done this time and time again where it's just being transparent, being open, being we'll put that word. able to word, communicate. Okay, hold on. I guess it, it's notes. tied to community, but it's transparent in other things too because our That's online true. communities we're transparent <laughs> with and we don't know any of them. No, if I mean, nobody knows what we're that. talking, knows what he's talking about, we have these online communities who are amazing people. Yeah. Who have been following us Facebook, for eight Instagram. years now. Yeah. So awesome. So we we try and just, we try and be the same person to every person we meet. Would that be like? Integrity. Integrity. I like that. I don't know if that's, in, that's integrity is like being the same person when no one's around. Right. But also when different people are around. It's right. all okay. the time. So you're like, I'm not showing this person that face and then that person this face. And <laughs> I'm, I only show you different faces. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I used to have to work on this. Show, showing me like the, I mean, like, why do you give everyone the good face? And yeah. then when you get home, I get that face. Yeah. You, you said, I want the best of you. Yeah. That was because like, I had a problem with showing you too well, much. Well, I think it's, I think it's normal just as a little tangent. Like it's easy to let down your, uh, the, the, the face you have on for everyone else when you're around the person you know loves you. Yeah. But we, we should really say, no, I'm actually going to work harder to give the best to my, closest neighbor my spouse yeah. doesn't mean we give the worst to our <laughs> other neighbors <laughs> Everybody but else. yeah i, guess I needed just, balance in my life yeah it's learning to how to be real like when you're around someone you could at least be real and say i'm not feeling good right now or mm-hmm. I'm, I'm i'm not anyways that was a tangent <laughs> so transparent i like that's a good word that's something that's always been mm-hmm. we've always prided ourselves and i don't want to say prided ourselves um uh, just being transparent yeah. not wanting to hide things be open um integrity is a good word so I think community transparent, generous, let's think. Uh, I would say faith, faithfulness um, to, you know, our Christian walk, to being obedient to God's word. You know, our faith is is foundational. I like, yeah, I like faithfulness, though, as the as the word, because it's easy to say faith, like faith's important, but faithfulness means to our faith and to the word and to God. It's like active. Yeah, it's like a a movement word. Was that a verb? <laughs> an action word what are some, i feel like there's other words I'm, I'm that we often say just real quick as a side note to those listening extraordinary okay. i just wanted to say before i forgot it okay that's fine extraordinary is a big word for us yes do you want to explain why well we, we talk about it a lot in the in the book uh, marriage after god mm-hmm. but it's this idea that we've always had a heart to not just be normal Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean that w- our goal was to be special and like, oh, we wanted to like have this because um, m- starting this ministry online wasn't even an idea in our hearts yeah. when we first got married. 
But our idea was like, well, let's just do the, let's do what God wants. And that's going to be extraordinary. Mm -hmm. You know, we went to the mission field for a while and then we went to Canada and we went to Florida and we did all these different little thi different actually, things. I can actually, I can see how even smaller decisions in our life, like buying this house, that wasn't a small decision, but, it was a but when idea. I, but I just think of decisions that we've made together and we've even out loud said to ourselves, well, that's extraordinary or right. well, yeah, that's we not the, the normal way. <laughs> we could do the ordinary way or we could do the extraordinary way. Yeah. And, and the kind of, reason you brought up this house, for those that don't know, they can actually find a YouTube video about us <laughs> doing the house process. We bought a, a I want to say a fixer Decrepit. upper, but it was a beater upper. It was a, <laughs> it was really bad. We had to tear down most of the, the house to fix it back up. But when we thought about it, we we're like, well, like this is how we're going to get what we can afford. Mm -hmm. And then we can make it ours. Mm -hmm. And so, which is, a, it, lots of people do that, but it was just, it was more, I don't know, it was extraordinary in my mind. So extraordinary is a good word for us. Yeah. So when you pause back there, I was just going to note that that's okay when you're doing this process together. There's going to be times when you, you know, something might be on your heart or right at the tip of your tongue. You don't know how to explain it. And I think that's why the majority of people will say, you don't just sit down and write a mission statement. Like it's a process and the process is what counts. The process is the important part because you're actually communicating with each other on what matters most to you. Good tip. Yeah. So you, you just mull it over and come back to the drawing board over and over and over again until you narrow it down. Yeah. And I think after we go through this, we'll be able to see these words and think of better words. Probably. <laughs> use. Or use the good old dictionary. Or just, yeah. Thanks, the Google. thesaurus. Google. <laughs> thesaurus. <laughs> um, okay. So are there any phrases that we repeat often or say? Yeah. I know a, one. <laughs> what? Go ahead. What you're uh, we do hard things. Yes. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, but you know what? That's a phrase that we only started saying when our kids started getting older. Yeah. But. To encourage them, we would say right. things, we're the Smiths and we do hard things. And so they own it and they say, oh, okay, we, this thing that I said is hard. We do those things. Yeah. What's cool is they've recognized when we're doing Bible time, you know, certain you know, uh, stories in the Bible of people doing hard things. They'll recognize and go, hey, David does hard things. Yeah, <laughs> so I think we do hard things is an important uh, phrase. And we didn't come up with that, of course. I've, but we use it. I, I, we use it. <laughs> I don't often. know where it came from. <laughs> um, and it doesn't just remind our kids; it reminds us because how many times a day do we get to this point of like, oh, I don't want to do this right now. I don't. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we do. It's a fight things. against the flesh. Yeah, like we just we did our uh, we did our lawns for the first time this season, and I just kept wanting to quit. I was like, I did enough. Uh, uh, next week, I'll I'll finish the weeds, and I'm like, <sighs> and then I go through, and I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go a little bit further and make this look nice, and then I'm like, oh, I just want to give up, and then I go a little bit further, and I just kept telling myself like, no, I can finish this. This is like my, my first that, time ever doing this. I should be fine. That same conversation happens to me every single time I go to work out. It's like, you know, you have ten squats on the the list to do, and you get through four, and you're like, I could do. Ah, I should. Okay, I'll do, do one more. You know, yeah. and then you want to bail out, but then you just keep going, you keep going, you keep going. I think it's a good phrase. What's some other phrases that we say? Mm. Uh, oh, um, I would, it's kind of a word, but we use it as a phrase. What? Uh, Got to have self-control. Oh, self-control. <laughs> so I, it's a word, but... Um, self-control. Self we use it in, in, a, in a sense that we're, we say it probably a million and a half times a day to our kids. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having self-control? You need to have self-control. Remember self-control. We say it to each other we now say, too, yeah. because we, in conjunction with, we're setting the example, we're setting the example. <laughs> like we'll be, one of us will be having an attitude about something, just tired or exhausted or frustrated. And I'll be like, hey, are you uh, self-controlled right now? <laughs> we say it a little quieter to each other. Okay. So what, are, what, we, is there any other phrases? I, I, we say other things. I'm sure there will. And we can come back to this if we think about it, but, um, I was going to ask, what, what is it that we value? What are some things that we really value? Um, the word of God. I just, we have to start with that. I know that sounds like the default answer, but it has to be the number one thing we value. It, it's what we tell our kids is the most important thing. It's what we try and teach them. We try and live it. it everything, you know, so yep. I, I think the word of God is. Um, now, I will say this, and it's something I've been convicted on recently, and it's something that God's going to convict me on for my whole life, probably. I think this, and then I'm like, but do I actually show this? Mm. <laughs> like, am I in my word as much as I could be? And I don't want to say should be because I don't think there's a number or a, how many chapters or how many words or how many mm. verses or whatever. But I know in my heart when I'm in and out of it. Mm. I know when I'm giving it, the, uh, giving God's word the attention it deserves in mm -hmm. my life. Um, like we could feel it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, recently you've been 
kind of just overwhelmed and just with the book launch that lots you, of stuff to lots do. of stuff to do and and i was just thinking to myself i'm like wonder what, uh, i didn't say this to you but i was wondering how when when you were in the word it's so funny it's not funny it's um wow this is really convicting because i know exactly the moment in that conversation where i had this thought that i wouldn't be feeling this way if i was in the word and when we, was it because I was thinking about, I didn't say it to you. I was just, I, cause I was just encouraging you and comforting you and letting you know it was going to be okay. But, um, no, it was just, it, it was really Im- it, impactful for me. And, um, and I've been in the word since. And I think sometimes we just get in these ruts or seasons where we're, we're, we're busy or we're, you know, going strong on certain areas of our life. And we don't realize when yeah, another area has we've neglected kind of an area. been neglected. And that was happening with me for a couple days. Well, I'd say about too. a week and a half. And, and I was feeling, remember I told you I was how I was feeling? Yeah, I think it was compiling. Yeah. And so I think, I think the Lord is good. <laughs> well, I was just thinking on Sunday, the message was about, uh, it, it, actually the message wasn't about it, but Matt said, he said, hey, we're, we can't know all of this in one sitting. We have to just go line by line, yeah. verse by verse, chapter by chapter, over years mm-hmm. of reading and reading and rereading and rereading and rememorizing and restating and mm-hmm. chewing it over. And then this morning, I was, I was listening to Jay Vernon McGee, and he brought he was in Isaiah, and he was bringing up the scripture that talks about precept upon precept, mm-hmm. line by line. Mm-hmm. And he was saying, you know, it, it, it takes five years. It, for, it took five years for Jay Vernon McGee just to teach through the Bible. And that was just him going through one time, mm-hmm. five years. and how you know how much do we go precept by precept are we just reading through it and, and, and layering on the knowledge that we're getting out of it um that was another good tangent uh, but word of god i think is uh <laughs> i think is the most valuable thing and it needs to be um, bolded no yeah bolded and <laughs> italicized, italicized <laughs> highlighted in green uh but i think it needs to be more evident in our own yeah. lives for our kids sake and for our own sake yeah and what a great tool, this mission statement to remind us to do that. You know, if this is going to be a foundational thing that is in front of mm-hmm. us by maybe putting it on a plaque in our house or however we're going to display this once we do finalize it, to be reminded of that, you know, every single day. Yeah, let's go back to the word of God. Let's, yeah. you know, what does the word say about this situation? And- so what, what other things do we value? I feel like we value stewardship. Stewardship. Is that a good word? That's good. Like we value write that down? being good stewards, um, which we talk a ton about in Marriage After God. Yeah. Because of how important it is to our ministries. It's like the whole book's message, really. <laughs> Stewardship. <laughs> Are you stewarding your what God's given you well? That's the whole book, actually. I guess part of um, what I was going to say goes along with this. I don't know if you would agree, but um, recognizing our our needs versus wants and, and minimalism, not that we're minimalist people because we have close. stuff. <laughs> We have stuff, but I don't feel like we're, we exaggerate and go outside of what we need. If that makes sense. I would agree. Um, I think there's been t- seasons in our life that because of discontentment or un- dissatisfaction or whatever, we've ch- chased after things. Or acquired. Collecting things or yeah. buying things that we don't need. Um, that's rarer, I would say. I'm not going to say it's not super rare, but we tend to get what we need. Yeah. And not much more. And again, we, there's plenty of things that we have. Um, I think we've been good over time of challenging each other or encouraging each other. You know, maybe we don't need that thing right now. Or, hey, if you are going to go get that, think about this. You know, you've done it with right. me with kids clothes before. Hey, instead of buying off that website, can we just try and, mm-hmm. you know. Because they're not going to fit in it. And or they're going to be stained up yeah. or whatever. Whatever the reasonings were, that was just the first thing off the top of my head. But yeah, I think that um, Stu- so st- that's stewardship, minimalist. Yeah, like I, I agree. We're not minimalist, but we definitely think on a more like, well, what do we need versus what do we want? And what do we want? Is it something we need? And is it something we can use? And is it going to be We're willing to and, be confronted by that for sure. Right. That's so, a good one. What is the other things we value? Um, relationships. I was going to say people. People. Yeah. Um, I, I would say this goes this up higher. Like our kids, because Olive really values relationships. Mm-hmm. All of our kids do, but I could just see it like in them. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, of course, the, the word of God 
points us to the, the God's really. I would say that almost yeah, the, almost the number one message in the Bible, other than Jesus Christ and Him crucified, which everything points to that, <laughs> is why He died for us yeah. is to give us relationship with the Father, mm. and then through that gives us relationship with other people, mm. <laughs> right? Like John seventeen, which we should put down because the next thing we're going to talk about is Scripture. But John 17 is a is a major one, which is the high priestly prayer. Jesus prays for his disciples and for everyone who believes in the message that the di- disciples bring to the world is that we would be one, that we'd be unified just as Christ and God are unified. Yeah. So, yeah. But before we uh, move on to the scripture section, um, we kind of I had some things I wanted to share about the values. Um, so some things that because this is all about brain dumping and just getting out of our minds and hearts what we believe to be true about our family to build up this mm-hmm. mission statement. So words like um, creativity, I feel like we value, you know, um, inspiring each other towards greatness. Can I throw in a word? Creating. Yeah. Creating. I mean, we've done the self-publishing thing, we the blogging, the social media, like it's just kind of been a part of what we do is, is so creativity, inspiring, but we also create. That's a part of us. No, it's Elliot loves to draw. Olive loves to paint. Yeah. That's good. Lots of Lego building. <laughs> Lots of Lego building. <laughs> By the way, the Lego thing you built with the Elliot yesterday is awesome. Mm. <laughs> it's like this huge city. It was There's supposed a... to be um, Bleecker Street in New York. <laughs> oh. Okay. I just wanted to finish it. <laughs> I didn't see the signs. On the... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go back and look at it. Um, so yeah, some, some other things that we value are um, <clears throat> experiences where... Uh, you know, being able to go to a museum if we're near one or... I feel like that falls under adventure, okay. adventurous, right? Yeah, but it's like learning experiences. Well, but learning then. That's a good word. Learning. So learning whether that's thing, experiences like or books, resources, pretty much anything I can get my hands on for us or for the kids that encourages growth and investment. All the educational films like um, Marvel's Avengers and oh my goodness. Iron Man. Those are... um. Really for, for us. For us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think learning is a, a great word. Um, so under value. Does, oh, food, oh, you does know food count? Can I say wisdom? <laughs> wisdom, yeah. And you actually should put food on there because that is a huge <laughs> thing for us. I, food. We not love just, food. Not just God loves food. I know, but the experience <laughs> of food, like the actual, you know, tasting good and figuring out what flavors are there, but then the experience of eating with people. Yeah. No, so actually, so food should be, it can, encompasses all these. <laughs> okay. So on our family mission statement, it's going to say the Smith family and then in bold right beneath that. Food. Food. That'll be our, it's short. Semicolon God's word. So it's like both, right? Well, like well the word of life. God's word is food. the bread of life. <laughs> so bread of life. <laughs> it all, it just literally all fits in. <laughs> Everyone here that's listening, our mission statement is food. <laughs> this is how our conversations really go in real life to you guys. We're not uh, making this up for you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can fit every single one of those things into food. We'll figure it yeah. out. Uh, wisdom. <laughs> uh, what I mean by wisdom is, so wisdom is the application of knowledge. Yep. Because you can know lots of things and do nothing with it. Not ever implement it. Yeah. Wisdom is like, oh, I, I actually know uh, how to navigate this kind of relationship. Therefore, I'm going to navigate it that way. Mm-hmm. Or I know um, that I should keep my mouth shut in this situation. Mm-hmm. So I could choose to to act on the knowledge or not. Um, so wisdom is is taking the word of God, taking life experiences and letting it teach us mm-hmm. and then saying, oh, last time we experienced that, let's make a different decision this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were actually just talking about this in the car, all the experiences that God's given us, hard ones that have taught us things yeah. that a lot of people won't ever experience. Right. But everyone listening has their own set of experiences that, that no one else will have, no one else will that have. God wants to use to teach them wisdom. Yeah. But wisdom is saying, okay, I'm going to learn from that mm-hmm. and not just learn from it, but apply I'm going to, I'm going to apply the knowledge yeah. to my life now, regardless of how easy it is or how it feels to my flesh. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So wisdom is a big cool. one. Okay. So moving on, uh, were there any more scriptures that you wanted to share? Um, I'm think so scriptures, um, one, you brought up generosity earlier. And so one of the scriptures that came to my mind was 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. It says, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 
And so I just, um, you know, thought about that. That's a great one. And cheerful giver. I think it defines, you know, how we give, which I love. Yeah, we don't ever, I mean, we try not to give out of compulsion as in like, oh, we must do this. No, we, yeah. like, we want to do this. Yeah. Um, so that's a good one. So another one I think of is in, uh, is the Great Commission, Matthew 28, uh, where Jesus literally tells the church what its job is. <laughs> and it says, uh, Matthew 28, verse 18, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I love that last portion. Yeah, and I and we can take this as like our individual mandates, but really it's it's the mandate for the church as a mm-hmm. whole. Because there's all these different functioning parts. Right. Discipling, evangelism, teaching, baptizing, baptizing, all these different things. And we we sometimes get to do all of them and sometimes get to just play a planting or a watering. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's what the church's job is. And I think it should be what our job is. And I feel like if I could summarize that whole verse, it would say to make him known, you know, yeah, like to know him and to make him known. That's such a big. Put that down. That's a, a awesome thing. Make him known. I think that uh, should definitely be in our, our statement because that is our life. Yeah. We want our children to do that. Right. And we want our children to know him. Right. And then we want our children to make him known Yeah, as our desire. So, Okay, so uh, we want to encourage you guys that as you do jump into um, having the, the experiencing this process of creating a family mission statement to go to scripture to see, you know, where mm-hmm. your family values line up according to his word, um, because it is foundational to how we live our lives and, and do what we do. Um, this was just to give you guys a, a kind of glimpse into the behind the scenes Aaron and Jen and and how we communicate through things like this. And um, this, you know, being able to share your vision for your family and life, being able to come up with and create a family mission statement, it's supposed to be a unifying experience of togetherness, Mm -hmm. intimacy, understanding one another, um, identifying who, who are we, you know, and what yeah. are we doing? Who are the Smiths? <laughs> well, yeah. who are they listening, you know, yeah. them listening? Who are you? Um, and, you know, kind of just uh, build this, this mission statement to look forward to um, sharing it with your family. Yeah. And we're not done with this. We are going to, um, on our own now, finish this up. But this was a, a, a our getting started. Yeah. We started it out. Uh, we're glad that you got to join us on this candid conversation of us trying to figure out who we are. And what we're about. Yeah. Um, um, I did want to share a couple practical things when you do do a, a family mission statement based off of what I've seen and you guys have probably seen too. But some fun ways to have this experience and share it with each other is uh, use a whiteboard or get some put to your paper or a pen and paper or like we just did, use your computer, your phone, whatever it takes to make those notes. Um, you can brain dump and then cross stuff out as mm-hmm. you go. Um, but have fun with it. Also, some examples of making it visible in the home. I've seen people say in this house and then they list all their words. So once we're done with it, we can put this up somewhere. So we're always saying like, hey, look what we we're we're not acting the way we say we're going to act. Exactly. Um, Some people do the last name in bold at the top and then share the core values or the mission statement. Um, Some people put it in a frame. Some people put it on script, on canvas. There's so many different ways that you can can visibly show it in your home. And the great thing about that is tattoos. That's a really good one, right? (laughs) Just tack it on our backs. Yeah. Um, No, but this is a great thing, like you said, to be mindful of how we operate as a family. We can even share as our kids get older, you know, and and teach them through it. Like, hey, we're the Smiths and we do hard things. See, it says it right there. So those are just some things. And and we wanted to encourage you guys in that. Yeah. And I hope you had fun with us too. We had fun. (laughs) And we're going to finish it up. We'll probably do it on a date night or over the next, uh, it doesn't have to be done like right away, right? It's something that we can evolve it's a, with us. It, and, it's a work in progress. And so many yeah. people who have shared theirs with ours have said it's still a work in progress and you can change it and alter it as you go. Mm-hmm. Um, remember, you can incorporate it as a, incorporate your family, your kids and everyone to, to, to participate in it. Um, but we did want to challenge you guys with doing it, even if it's just, you know, the the initial go yes, at it like we just started did. on your next day night. Yeah. Have, have, that's the reason you're like, oh, we have to go do our mission statement. Oh, we need a babysitter. Let's go do this. <laughs> have um, fun. Have yeah. fun. Have fun. <laughs> and then invite your kids into it also. Yeah. Not on date night. Do it. Go to date night. Start it. Come home. Invite them in afterwards or on another day. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys don't need a specific set of questions to figure out, you know, what we just did is we just said, you know, what are some phrases and words that define our family of what we know of our family already? And uh, we just started. 
You just do it. Ask each other hard questions. Cool. So we like to end our episodes with a prayer. And so Jennifer, would you pray for us? Sure. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of marriage. May we continue to walk in obedience to your word as we seek to fulfill your will for our lives and our marriage. We pray we would consider the purpose you have for our marriage and we pray we would work together to communicate what our family mission statement is. We pray we would humbly submit it before you and that it would become a pillar in our family and in our life that reminds us what we are doing and where we are headed. May this family mission statement build up according to your core values, be an anchor for our marriage and family, motivating us to live our lives on purpose. May the experience of considering and building our family mission statement be a time of togetherness, intimacy, and understanding. Thank you for the hope you give us every day. May we honor you with our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we just want to thank everyone for joining us this week and listening to this episode. I hope you had fun with us. Uh, it was a lot of fun for for us, as <laughs> I said earlier. Uh, but go start a mission statement with your with your spouse. And with your family and see what happens. See how it focuses you. You might end up finding out that you're participating in things that don't even line up with what you guys believe as a family. That might be cool. Or you might realize that there's opportunities out there that you could be tapping into because of it. So we just wanted to thank you. We look forward to having you next week. And if you have not yet went to shop.marriageaftergod.com and picked up a copy of our new book, Marriage After God, we'd love to invite you to do so. And uh, we thank you for everything. You guys are awesome. Uh, all the reviews, all of the um, the comments and stuff we get on our social media, and just all the listens. You guys, you guys listening to these podcasts, we just so appreciate you guys. And uh, we look forward to having you next week. See you later. Did you enjoy today's show? If you did, it would mean the world to us if you could leave us a review on iTunes. Also, if you're interested, you can find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. 